you guys have going? Well, let me know down in the comments what you guys think this is. I'll give you a hint, it's by a company named Roblox. If you watch my channel, you could probably instantly guess what this bottle is. Kids don't play with scissors, they're dangerous, so get kid style scissors with a, uh, what, blunt in. I wonder what that is. Roblox, innovation for better living. Try to get a hoodie up. Okay, well, we have an upside down box with the Roblox S7 Max V Ultra. And if you haven't watched my previous video on just a first look or introduction, basically, this Roblox race model has 5,100 pascals of suction, also has the vibrarized technology where it vibrates the mopping pad and itself has the reactive AI 2.0 technology which combines the RGB camera, which is found on the S6 Max V, and also offers one 3D light structure camera, which basically allows it to navigate in basically any light conditions. Now, here's some of the specifications. You got the automatic mop washing. You have automatic tank though. Yes, there's an onboard water tank. So when it goes out and mops and the water tank gets low, it goes back to the docking station, fills up and continues on. Roblox says it comes to up to 300 square meters or about 3,230 square feet. Now you have self-cleaning. There is a self-emptying bin installed. I believe it's this large one, a 2.5 liter dust bag, which gets you about 7 weeks worth of dust holding this bag. Now Roblox did say that they're going to come with a washable dust bag which should last about 6 to 12 months uh, in the future. A 30% fast charging, so it takes about 4 hours to fully charge the robot and you get about 180 minutes of run time. Basically it's nice to have two boxes because in the past these self-emptying robots come in these giant boxes and I definitely struggle trying to get up on my table. But having two boxes is a little bit less weight. Okay, so let's look at this. This is a really cool design, uh, really light structured system right there. So what this does is recognize objects plus it can uh, navigate in basically any type of light conditions. Alright, there's a single side brush right there. You got your light out navigation. There's a three button layout. I'm so glad that Roblox went back with that. So up top here you got your docking station button. You got your clean button. Also you got your spot clean function. So very handy. Okay, so for this mopping challenge, in the back there I have some dried up spilled coffee and in the front here is some dried up mud. Now, keep in mind that these 
Mopping slash vacuuming robots aren't really designed to replace traditional mopping. I do recommend mopping by hand from time to time, but for day-to-day -day operations, or if you occasionally spill that coffee or maybe the ketchup, well, these mopping robots should do fine. And they also do a really good job picking up the light dust and debris that the vacuuming miss. Returning to the dock. I don't know about you, but I really think the blue indicator on the robot's pretty cool. Also, when it's charging, it turns green. So I do appreciate that multicolored light. Kind of gives you an extra uh, indication of what the robot's doing. Alright, so you may notice that the robot's spinning 180 degrees, so it can go ahead and wash its mopping pad. Now, if the water tank was low and was going to go back and continue on cleaning, it will actually go back and fill up this water tank. But since it's just going back to a docking station, it's just going to wash the mopping pad and not fill up the tank. Now, take a look at the mopping pad. You can see it does have a lot of the dirt and grime on there. So, we'll see how well the self-cleaning feature works. Now, one thing to know, it does require two hands to remove the mopping plate, where other manufacturers require a single hand. In the bottom right hand corner, there's a little icon that looks like a house that's called dock. Now click the wash feature or you have the option to self-empty. Okay, so let's take a look at the cleaning performance. This is just a basic rice challenge, nothing too strenuous, but I just kind of want to showcase the clean pad. And if you take a look here, it also lets you know not to try to vacuum up liquids or nails or screws. I guess that's kind of self-explanatory, but Roblox want to make sure you do that so you don't damage the robot or the extractor bar. All right, let's go ahead and select uh, zone cleaning. Now, with a lot of these smart mapping robots, once you create a map, you can edit the rooms, you can create rooms, you can do keep out zones, no mopping zones, and you can do area select. And with the Roblox, you can select uh, power levels and mopping levels. Let's go ahead and press clean. Alright, so here's a look at the live map tracking. You can see the area where the robot's cleaning, also the area of the rugs. Now, the Roblox S7 Max V Ultra is no different from a lot of these Roblox models. Uh, the single side brush does a pretty good job and it is speed sensitive. So, for example, in open areas, it actually slows down and along the edges, it will speed up. Now, if the robot encounters an obstacle, it will actually slow down the side brush as well to help avoid tangles. One thing to know is the Roblox will start with the perimeter sweep, then fill in that perimeter with a back and forth clean pattern. Now, if you have it set to doing twice or three times, it will do a crisscross pattern, one of the most efficient ways to clean the room. You may notice along the edges of the rubber mats, there's still a bunch of rise. That's because the robot got lifted up and it lost its suction. Alright, let's go and jump into the application. In the top right hand corner, there's three horizontal dots. This is your vacuum settings. Let's go and jump into the auto emptying settings. In this setting, you can actually enable the self emptying. And there's four different modes, smart, light, balance, and max. I prefer max, provides the strongest self emptying. Now with the self washing feature, there's like a little slider. So you can actually tell it how long you want it to go out before it washes the mopping pad. Again, you have the option to do deep cleaning, which is the best for the mopping performance, the most water, and the most intense vibration. All right, let's go ahead and go into the carpet settings. Uh, with the carpet settings, you can actually lift up the mopping pad, or you can just ignore it, and the mopping pad will stay down. 
Here's some additional optical avoidance settings. Uh, one thing to note is if you do have pets, uh, enable the pet feature so it's more sensitive to avoid the pet poo and all the other obstacles. Now you do have the option to turn off that little light, but I like to leave it on because it's a pretty cool little effect. Okay, so you also have some additional settings and most of it's very similar uh, to the other models I've reviewed. Okay, so one thing to note is if you go into the map management, make sure map savings is enabled so you can save your map and edit your maps. Also, if you have a multi-level house, make sure that feature is enabled. Now, you do have the option to assign different vacuum levels and water levels within each room. That's called customize, but you can see there's a bunch of different vacuum levels. You can do water levels and also intensity of the scrubbing or the vibration. Once you get your map created, I do recommend just trying it out and just playing around with the map. There's a lot of different settings. There's too much to cover in this field, but later on, I'll do more in depth of the application. Well, you may notice I was spilling some rice on the ground. Unfortunately, there's no little plastic flap, but I guess if you have a plastic flap, well, you don't get the self-emptying effect. Alright, so I did try out the S7 self-emptying system and it worked really well for my day-to-day -day task and I suspect the Ultra system is going to be the very similar, has a very similar design and dustbin. Okay, so let's go and check out the unboxing. I left this towards the end of the video, but during my unboxing, I'm going to talk about a lot of the features that the Ultra has. Now, there is going to be three different models. There's going to be the S7 Max V, the S7 Max V Plus, and the S7 Max V Ultra. All right, so we're back. I have a mopping plate. Something we've seen on the, uh, what was this, the S6? Mopping pad and plate. Toss that out of there. All right, so this is the small docking station. Something you found on like the S5 Max, the S4. Uh, if you saw my Roblox S6 video, you can see the larger dock. Kind of wish they included that because one nice thing about the large dock is that actually you can wrap the cable around. And, and lastly, with the large dock, it actually charged slightly faster, had a uh, slightly higher charge rate. This is like Christmas all over. I was actually really excited to have the opportunity to review this model. And if you guys could, like and subscribe to my video so my channel can grow and I can continue bringing these cool products to life. Uh, because without your support, uh, it won't be possible to do it. So I really do appreciate all you guys. You guys are awesome. All these loyal subscribers that come back, comment on my videos. Uh, it really doesn't mean a lot. If you have any questions about these models, feel free to shoot a comment down below because I'll be more than happy to answer them as well. To be honest, right off the bat, I think this is one of the best looking robots out there. Uh, just first impressions. You got the red right here with the black. That really does make it look like a premium robot. But let's start from the top here or the, from the uh, front. You can see that reactive AI 2.0 technology. And it looks like there's like this little QR sticker right here. They'll have the Roblox app, just uh, scan it and it should go right to the application. Uh, 3D technology and you got that one RGB camera. Well, the S6 Max V had two RGB cameras. But one thing about the S6 Max V is it did struggle in very low light conditions. But they say that this model can basically navigate in any type of lighting conditions. Okay edge wall sensor and in the back here the water tank and if you notice really close there's like a little hole right there that's where it can auto fill the water tank here it is guys well uh from just looking at it this water tank is a little bit smaller than the previous generations uh, i believe it's probably around maybe 150 milliliters but don't worry it does have the ability to auto fill this so it's not going to be a huge issue and it can come up to 3200 30 uh, square feet or about 300 square meters. And here is just, I believe, might be an exhaust vent, and there's nothing on this side. You can see a dustbin. This is very similar to the S7's dustbin. There's a little flap to the side here. And this is an E11 rated filter, and it is washable. Air vent right here. That's where the airflow goes and exhaust the dirt from this side. On the S7, there is a little piece of plastic off to, over there. Uh, make sure you remove it so it has the best 
uh, efficiency to empty out the dirt. It's just a little, little plastic thing right there. So get that removed right away. Roblox S7 Max V, just the name it applies, but you also have the Plus model, which just does self-emptying, and lastly, the Ultra, which has the Ultra Dock. Now, one thing to note is only the Ultra series, uh, or the Ultra, have, has the self-refilling water tank. No other versions uh, have that capability, so just keep that in mind. This is very similar to the S7. You have the single side brush with five arms. This is all rubber style. Now, just during my personal testings, I think these style uh, side brushes do a pretty good job. They hold up pretty well. You got your, uh, what is this? Six cliff sensors, so it doesn't take a trip down the stairs or play hide and seek. You got your front wheel caster, two charging contacts, uh, some legal information. You got this single extractor bar, it's an all low brush design. Very, very nice. Uh, same as on the S7. Now, one thing to note when I was testing the S7, hair was really easy to remove. Just try to pull it off, there's no uh, tool required. And yes, you can remove the ends as well to get the hair off. So just a quick twist, they snap on and off. So that below is the vibration system. This little tab right here vibrates and there's about everything. You can just attach your mopping plate right here. Now one thing to note is the robot will charge and auto empty from the front and then it rotates 180 degrees to fill the water tank and to uh, basically clean the mopping pad and to wipe off any excessive water. So that's just something interesting. I did not know that the robot actually had to spin 180 degrees. A quick start guide, very handy. Our fun instruction manual, empty wash fill dock. So it might be important to follow these instructions so you can properly maintain the docking station. But very cool. Well, it looks like this is just a, a, a plate where the robot goes up onto. Uh, these little grooves helps get traction, so if it's mopping the wheels get a little wet, it doesn't slip trying to get back on a docking station. Pretty interesting. This, this looks like a dust bag. Now, this is 2.5 liters, gets about 7 weeks worth of dirt, depending on how often you use it. And I believe this might be a spare, usually they install uh, one inside the product itself. But we'll just take a look here. Alright, so about the same size as the competitors. And it has this kind of like little plastic uh, thing, which I believe it goes up and down to uh, help seal the bag when you're done. Looks like this is our power cable, indicated right there. It's a pretty long uh, cable. Let's go ahead and pull this guy out. It looks like there's nothing else. Well, wow, I'm excited. Woo. Smells like fresh. Uh, plastic or packaging. Let's start from the bottom here. Now, you may see this wide opening, like on the S7, uh, the dirt actually goes in here from the extractor port, and it actually works pretty well. So, in theory, whatever can get inside the robot, being vacuumed up, in theory, can go back out. So, that's why they have this really large opening, the largest in the industrial or industry. Okay, so here's some grooves here where the robot goes up a dock. There's actually some charging contacts right there. At first, I thought that was the 3D technology, so my mistake is actually charging pins up front. And there's actually some charging pins down to, uh, below as well. So if you use the ultra dock, you can use the uh, smaller dock. Wait. Inside here, we have this little scraper bar. Uh, I don't want to force it, but I'll put a video up how that works. It actually goes back and forth. And this is like a soft bristle bar that will help Remove any dirt and grime off the mopping pad. There's your charging contacts. And if you look very closely, there's the auto refill port right there where you can fill the onboard water tank. And this area just allows you to accumulate the dirt and debris. And there's a vacuum motor that'll suck up all that uh, gunk. Now, let's move up to the top here. Off to the right here is the dirty water tank. 
Uh, let's see how you guys open this. I think we open it from here. Very interesting large opening and this little sensor right here allows it to not overfill the dirty water tank so you don't have a mess. And there's a nice can handle. Very handy. Right? Same thing, looks almost identical. And there's a little uh, max line right there. So make sure your uh, handles in the front there or you won't be able to open the lid. But same system, you actually have this little water pump and it looks like there is a little uh, sensor down below to let you know you need to refill the water tank. Uh, I think Roblox may include some chemicals down the road, not 100% sure. So, uh, like some generations or some models, you actually can put some chemicals down and it'll help uh, with the mopping performance. But very, very cool. Alright, last thing we're going to look at is the self-emptying system. What's interesting, it's not like a little carrying, uh, what do you call it, a little uh, container. It's just a top that gets removed. And we have the bag itself right here. Let's see. I think we just lift it up. And it, you notice when I lift up, it actually seals off the bag. See what's inside. So you got these ports. Uh, you can see this large port. That's where the dirty water comes out. And this is where the fresh water comes in. Now there's the vacuum motor. I assume it's right there. And this is where your bag goes. So a very interesting design. Roblox literally did not follow the competition. They went with their own design and I'm excited to see how well that works. Okay, so let's take a look at the mapping process. Now, since this rule of vacuum has a lot of navigation, the mapping process is fairly quick. Only takes a single cleaning run to create an entire map. Now, my recommendation is to open all the doors, try to pick up the area as much as possible. Don't worry about the docking station location. These rule of vacuums are pretty smart. So, down the road, if you find that the docking station is not an ideal location, you can always move the dock and the rule of vacuum should be able to update the docking location. Now let's take a look at the application here. You can see I have map saving enabled and it just kind of gives you some helpful hints. Make sure that you have multi-level enabled as well if you do have a multi-level house or you can mess up your map. Now this rule of vacuum can save up to I believe like 10 different maps. Also you can see with a lot of navigation it's creating that map in real time and as the rule of vacuum goes around it will pick up obstacles it sees. Um, like for example, the pedestals and also like these little traffic cones that represents obstacles that the camera picked up. Now, if you pick up or you click on those objects, you actually will see a static image of that object. Now, you do have the option to disable that if you're worried about privacy concerns, but Roblox is pretty good about keeping your uh, data safe. Okay, as the robot's going along, it will just continue on building on to the map. Okay, let's go ahead and wrap up this video. I'll give you my first impressions and some of my thoughts. Now, overall, the Roblox S7 Max V Ultra is a pretty nice world of vacuum so far. It seems to work well. Now, keep in mind, this robot might not be for everyone, especially if you're not willing to spend $1,400 
Hopefully, when it's released, Roblox will have a nice discount with some nice incentives like accessories that's included as a promotional prize. Now, if you don't want to spend all that money, again, you can get like the S7 Max V, which doesn't have the self-emptying or the self-washing feature. Should be significantly cheaper, but will have the reactive AI 2.0 technology and the Vibrize system. Now, there's going to be a Q series, which is like the mid-range. I'm not sure what features will be included, but with my speculation, it will probably be very similar to like the Roblox S7. It won't have all the newer optical avoidance systems or maybe the Vibrize system, but it should be a good contender for someone who's looking for a cheaper option, but wants self-emptying. Okay, so the Max V Ultra offers a lot of features, um, probably more than what you ever need, but I do appreciate for the price you're going to spend, uh, Roblox is definitely trying to give you a lot for your money. Now, if you're looking for a top-notch or a vacuum with basically every feature possible, I think the S7 Max V Ultra shouldn't disappoint. I will continue testing this robot vacuum throughout the weeks and months, and I'll let you know when there's an official release date of this model. I'll have a nice discount for you guys, and I'll do an update video, probably like a one-month user review video or something like that. So I appreciate you guys watching. I do appreciate if you guys stuck toward the end of the video. It does help out my channel. And again, if you have any questions about the S7 Max V Ultra or any other Roblox models, feel free to shoot an email down below or a message. I'll be more than happy to respond to you. Usually I respond within a few seconds to a few minutes. I'm pretty good about responding back to you guys. All right, have a great rest of the day. Adios, see you later, be safe.